tomorrow the Supreme Court is hearing the Dobbs versus Mississippi case. If Roe v. Wade is overturned, reversed, substantially changed, um, and abortion rights are, are severely curtailed, what will the president do about that? Well, um, the president uh, has is obviously a strong supporter of uh, a woman's right to choose, the protection of Roe v. Wade. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to speak to a court case that will be heard tomorrow at the Supreme Court. Uh, but he's long called for uh, Congress to take action uh, to uh, solidify um, Roe v. Wade um, uh, in, uh, in uh, no, re solidify Roe v. Wade. Um, let me just add anything here. He also believes uh, Mississippi's law blatantly uh, violates women's constitutional right to safe and legal abortions. Uh, the case, this case presents a grave threat to our women's fundamental rights as protected under Roe v. Wade. Of course, every American deserves access to health care, including reproductive health care. He's deeply committed to the constitutional right established in Roe. Um, as you know, the Department of Justice filed a brief in the case and will participate in the oral argument. Uh, and he's committed to working with Congress to codify the constitutional right. Good evening. Both sides have been waiting for this day since Mississippi passed the law in 2018. The government cannot force her to bear a child against her will. Attorneys representing Mississippi's lone abortion clinic say that's what's at stake when the nation's highest court takes up the state's 15-week abortion ban on Wednesday. A woman has the right to choose whether to carry her pregnancy to term. Rob McDuff with the Mississippi Center for Justice argues the U.S. Supreme Court has already decided and reaffirmed that states cannot ban abortions prior to a fetus's viability, which is around 24 weeks. You shouldn't be able to go back and overturn settled rights. The Supreme Court overturns its precedents rather less often than is thought. And that's been especially true of the Roberts Court. Although in the last term, the court overturned three of its precedents, which was quite rare for that court. It did so in the Janus v. Ask Me case when it overturned the Abood decision. It did so in the Wayfair case, which involved the taxation of internet sales by out-of-state vendors, which overturned the Quill case. And it did so implicitly, at least, in Trump v. Hawaii, in which the court found that the infamous Karamatsu case was no longer good law. But again, this is an exception where three cases in one term resulted in overturning prior precedents. Simply because the composition of the Supreme Court has changed. But that's exactly what anti-abortion advocates want and expect the court's new 6-3 conservative majority to overturn Roe v. Wade. We have an opportunity to save literally millions and millions of lives in the future if this case uh, is to be ruled upon favorably. Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves shepherded the law in question through the state legislature. And fellow Republican governors like South Dakota's Kristi Noem support it. We actually have to go out and take actions that defend lives and save lives. The justices are not expected to rule until next summer. But if they overturn Roe, many states, including Mississippi and South Dakota, already have measures in place that would automatically ban abortion. And even if the high court does not formally overturn Roe, a decision weakening any precedent would open the door to new restrictions, like bans on some early stage abortions. In Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor. Have you noticed that as everything around you seems to decline, one thing still grows? It is the power of your rulers. None of their plans and directives have solved your problems or made your life better. The only result has been their increased control over you at the cost of your freedom. Do you know why? You gave them the power.